I'm fairly skeptical of the paranormal, so I don't really know what to believe. But the only stories that are even a little similar to what I experienced all seem to be paranormal. To give some backstory, my street and neighborhood are pretty quiet, especially at night due to the number of young families and elderly couples that live on my street, which makes staying up into the early hours of the morning more relaxing and also a bit cooler, knowing that I'm most likely the only person on my street that's awake. The only thing is that I've had some creepy experiences, like hearing noises or even seeing a few drug deals, but most of that can be chalked up to living next to a big forest with lots of wildlife or just some sketchy neighbors. But for the past week, I've been trying to find a logical explanation for the strange events that keep occurring. It started at 2 a.m. last Tuesday morning. I was just sitting in my bed, on my phone with earbuds in, something I do almost every night, when I began to hear whistling coming from out my window. I took my earbuds out and began listening to the whistle, trying to come up with an explanation. Normally I'm not scared by anything in my neighborhood this late, and to be honest I get more excited that something's happening and that I'm there to witness it but this time felt different. I wanted so badly to get up, to look out my window, but I was almost paralyzed with fear. I don't know what came over me, but every minute that went by of this whistling, I felt the pit in my stomach growing larger. It went on for almost an hour, and for the entire hour I waited for the whistling to start a tune or a song I could look up but it just kept whistling the same note in a strange pattern. It would whistle one note for a good minute, then take a break for about 30 seconds, and then return to its one-minute whistle. Until about 20 minutes in, when the whistles got shorter and closer together, only to return to the original pattern after about 10 minutes. What was even stranger was that whatever it was, was pacing in front of mine and my neighbor's house up until it stopped, when it retreated back down the other side of the street. As I heard it leave, I almost immediately felt the pit in my stomach subside, and while I was still confused, I decided I should just go to sleep before I scared myself even more. So the next day I asked my parents and even some of my friends that live close by if they had ever heard anything like that. Everyone assumed it was some kind of animal, which made me feel a lot better. But I wanted a definite answer of what I heard. I stayed up for hours that night, researching types of animals that were local to my area and the noises they made. I didn't find anything that matched. This only left me more frustrated that I had no clue what it was. So I continued staying up in hopes that I would hear it again and that this time I would look out my window to see it. But with my luck, I've never heard the whistling again, except lots of weird things have been happening. After the whistle, I began hearing somebody or something walking around in mine and my neighbor's driveways, and sometimes even yards, very late at night. But whenever I go to check, I can't see anything. Then about two nights ago, I swear I saw a figure of a person lurking behind my neighbor's car. And then the night after that, I saw what looked like a flashlight in the woods near my house. And whatever was holding that flashlight was running out of the woods. Then again last night, I swear I saw a person crouching near my neighbor's car, just looking around. I thought I was done researching because I couldn't find anything about animals. But now I've begun researching any stories even similar to mine, hoping that either I'm not alone, or even better, somebody has the answer to the strange occurrences going on. Because I would like to start sleeping at more normal times again, and not have to be worried about either a stalker, or a poltergeist, or something else, coming to get me in my sleep. I've always had a belief in the unknown and spirits, 
but I had never really experienced anything from the unknown, other than the typical deja vu we all experience from time to time. And then, high school happened. I have two stories about my own personal experiences. They are true events, even if people are skeptical. I know what I saw. I know what I felt. Believe whatever you want to believe, or believe what will help you sleep at night. But either way, these are true. Before I get into the stories, it's probably worth pointing out that I used to use Ouija boards with one of my friends. Stupid. I know. So when I was in high school, we lived in this neighborhood with an old textile mill in it. I always had a creepy vibe about the mill. I have never looked up if anything happened there, because I have always been, and still am, afraid of what I might find. My bus stop used to be in front of the mill, and I had to start walking to school, because I just couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched by someone, or something, at the mill. Now, two things happened after I started walking to school. One, I started seeing a little girl out of the corner of my eye, about four or five in the mornings as I was getting ready for school. I was the only one awake at the time, so maybe she just felt comfortable appearing then. I never felt threatened by her, and I don't know her name, but she looked like she was maybe from the 20s. I actually stopped seeing her after a while, which made me kind of sad, even though her presence also sent a shiver down my spine. The second thing that happened was my brother and his friend decided to go in the mill, where, according to them, they found markings where a body was and dried blood. I don't know how true that is because I refuse to go into that place, but I still can't ever shake the feeling that something is watching me even to this day. In fact, I think it has intensified since my brother and his friend went in there. Apparently now it's being remodeled and reopened. I hope they cleansed that building of any negative energies and spirits first, but somehow I doubt it. My second story takes place a few years after the incident with the little girl at my sweet 16. My parents threw me a surprise party with a luau theme, I had a few of my close friends over, some staying overnight. One of my friends, let's call her Cat, needed to go home, so we all decided to walk her home. I mean, she didn't live that far, maybe two or three blocks at most. Well, we get there and we're all hanging out. Cat lived near a cemetery, and another friend who I'll call Sam suggested that we just walk around for a little bit. Now, it's maybe 9.30 at night. This cemetery has been known to have fog only in the cemetery. Fog that doesn't affect the area outside of its cobblestone walls. I didn't tell anyone, of course, and we all thought it would be a great idea. So we all hop over the wall, which really isn't that tall, and we just start walking around, looking at who's buried there. In this cemetery, there is an area that has its own fence, and after a while, Sam and I get a little bored and decided we wanted to go inside. So we did. And immediately, she starts feeling sick to her stomach and we can't figure out why. So we tell everybody still in the cemetery and we leave. The second we leave, Sam's feeling better. No nausea, no stomach pain, nothing. Then I started feeling nauseous, which freaked me out a little bit. So I convinced everyone to go back to my house because I didn't want to be around that place anymore. We told Cat goodbye and we left. I didn't stop feeling nauseous until we were inside my house. I don't think whatever was in there wanted us there. And I'm glad that all that ever happened to me was a wave of nausea. I assume it could have been a lot worse. When I was in the third or fourth grade, I saw a UFO with my older cousin and little brother. This was in Voorhees, New Jersey, during our summer vacation. We were in a high-end apartment complex and had gone outside to go play. This was in the late 90s. We had decided to first see who was out before deciding on what toys to bring out with us. Think water guns, bikes, scooters, Pokemon cards, things like that. We were going to go to the park first, 
but heard a strange, high-pitched whistling noise down the hill from our apartment building near the mailboxes. It was the kind of whistling noise that brought about a strange energy. I noticed everything seemed really quiet, except for this whistling. I say whistling, but that's the closest sound we have in this world that people would collectively be able to understand. But it wasn't exactly whistling. It gave me the creeps. I wasn't scared, I just felt uneasy. My older cousin decided to go check it out. He ran down the hill, and I saw him turn his head left, and just stop dead in his tracks. I saw his jaw drop and his eyes go big. He said, Oh my gosh, come look at this, it's a UFO. My brother and I were both younger and weary of him since he was known to be a prankster and mischievous. We didn't want to come, and he was like, you won't regret it. He looked at us in such a way that I believed him, so I went down to go look as well. There was an apartment building blocking the view of the UFO, so I walked slowly to where I would pass it and be standing by my cousin. As I neared the location, this whistling noise became louder. I started to see the UFO floating and hovering right next to the balcony of a family we knew because they had older kids that would sometimes play with us. The UFO was about the size of a large pickup truck, and it was giant and metallic, but not a metallic ball. It was spinning really fast and looked as if it should have been able to reflect its surroundings because it was so shiny, but it didn't. The whistling was this ball spinning so fast, yet so slowly as well. It had that saucer thing around it, but not huge or anything. Maybe the saucer it was spinning inside was only about three feet in width. But the UFO had to have had a diameter about the length of a Ford Tundra. I was in absolute awe. I felt like I'd won something, like yes, there's proof, and I know something that my parents don't know. My brother had been calling to us and I hadn't been paying attention. I just told him to come and look. He was always shy and a crybaby, but he came reluctantly. I was just observing this thing spinning and thinking that it had to be observing me too. I noticed in the sky there was like a tunnel of a spinning energy or clouds in the air. That tunnel went straight up into the sky and far away and the UFO, or its copy, was on the other side way off in the distance. My cousin wanted to throw a rock at it and tell them to get out. My little brother screamed his panic scream and told him no. I also told him not to do that. He listened to us, but I guess they felt his hostility, and the UFO moved back and higher. My cousin said, see, they're scared, let's make them go and he started screaming and saying go away and get out. My brother and I joined. I can't remember if we actually did start throwing rocks or not, but I don't think we did. That part gets murky. The tunnel looked like it got bigger in size and the UFO started looking like it was appearing in the tunnel, even though it was right in front of us. It was like there was a delay, and we could see snapshots of the UFO in the tunnel going up like a loading bar where it's copying itself. There was a loud sound like a whoosh and my little brother screamed and bolted home. The UFO was no longer in front of us but the tunnel was still there and we could see like a bright light and the UFO at the end of the tunnel and then it was gone. We ran home to tell my mom. When we got there, my mom was pissed and thought that my cousin and I had tricked my brother and scared him. She couldn't quite understand through my brother's hysterical crying what he was saying, only heard that they made me see the aliens. We saw no aliens and we explained this to my mom. We explained what we saw and I said, Mom, it's real. I was the only girl and my mom believed me because I wasn't one to lie or prank. I used to keep a diary and I wrote this experience down. I forgot about it, and somehow it had felt like a dream of the years. We had moved to a new house, and many strange things happened there. And something absolutely terrifying and awe-inspiring happened that made me check my diary. 
I had asked my brother if he remembered the UFO, and he said he did. He told me the story and it matched what was in my diary. We called my uncle and cousin and had my cousin retell his side of the story. Years later, all of our stories matched. I always get random intrusive thoughts at night, when everything is quiet and I can't sleep. They're thoughts composed of words I sometimes don't even say or know the meaning to, and they just pop into my mind without any prior thoughts related to them. Often they lead me to have to look up definitions. I'm legitimately afraid that some sort of frequency wave is intruding on my mind and manipulating my cognitive functioning. Also, sometimes when I nod out at night, when I'm tired but I'm trying to stay awake, as soon as I nod out but am still mostly conscious, I'll hear fragments of a voice making a sound. Sometimes it will say my name. And one time, I didn't even nod out, and to the right of me, I heard the name of my boyfriend out loud. I swear my house is haunted by some kind of energy. My father died here 11 years ago by killing himself. I was the last one to enter his bedroom where he passed to shut the windows because it was storming heavily outside before leaving to spend the night at my grandmother's house. I was very close to my dad and took after him in many ways, features and all. However, years before he passed, I was very resentful and nothing but mean and nasty to him. Literally minutes before he passed, I gave him a dirty look for no reason. Flash forward 11 years and I have found myself exactly where he was before he died. Isolated, depressed, and addicted to opioids. At first I thought I was haunted by him, but maybe there's a dark energy that followed him throughout his life, and now it's attached to me. I just feel so haunted here all the time, alone in my mom's basement. Late at night when everything is quiet, Around midnight until 4 o'clock when the sun is just about to rise and the birds start chirping, I always feel a strong presence around me. And sometimes my lamp and bedroom lights will glow brighter and cause all the shadows in my room to become darker and darker. It's creepy. And to make my mom's house even creepier, it's full of my grandmother's old furniture from the 50s and 60s. Everything is old with weird energies attached. Everyone that I've asked who's come over to my house has told me that they feel a very strange and dark and sinister energy here. We moved into it newly built and it's only about 14 years old now, so I really don't know what's going on. This was not a dream. I was fully awake, but I was having a hard time trying to go to sleep. I was in my room but I couldn't fall asleep there, so I moved to the living room. Usually, as I'm trying to go to sleep, I'll let my mind wander on its own, and I always end up thinking of nonsense, like sentences or scenarios that don't mean anything. This time was different, though. I can almost always control the thoughts and steer them into the direction I want them to go, but this time I couldn't. It's like my thoughts were not my own. My mind was just racing with random sentences that I would never be able to think of. I had my eyes closed, but suddenly every thought racing through my head just stopped on a dime, and I hear a high-pitched female voice scream, Someone is home. She said a name, but I couldn't make it out. It seriously sounded like it was being yelled directly into my ear, and it turned into an echo chamber in my brain. I heard it replay over and over and over until it faded out. All of this happened in maybe five seconds, but it felt like I'd heard it 15 times. I lifted my head up off the couch to see who was there, but it was no one. So I decided to try to go to sleep again, and as soon as I closed my eyes, all I could see was dirt, a field, and eight blue orbs. I'm still awake at this point, and out of nowhere, I hear the voice again, this time inside of my head, saying, Eight people died here. I'm really not sure what to think of this. Nothing like this has ever happened to me before, 
I used to experience sleep paralysis and lucid dreaming quite often, but not like this. With everything I was hearing and seeing, I felt like it was completely out of my control. It was so weird. I've had three UFO encounters. I'll tell them here. Number one. In the summer of 2011 or 2012, I was 12 years old, and my mom, my sister, and I were all driving out to California to drop my sister off at boarding school. I was sitting in the back seat doing whatever, when all of a sudden my mom says, Hey, look up in the sky. You may never see this again in your life. When I looked up, I remember seeing this orange dot in the sky, just sitting there. Well, to me it looked like that, but my mom said that it followed us throughout the whole ride. People on the highway were slowing their cars down and looking out their windows to try to see what this thing was, when it suddenly let out this really bright flash and continued to hover. I still vividly remember seeing a plane fly by it as well. We called my brother, who was an astronomy enthusiast at the time, and tried to ask him what he thought it was that we were seeing, but he had no idea. Months later, I told a former science teacher of mine the story and asked what he thought of it. But he couldn't explain it either. Number 2. This one takes place three years after the first event. By now, I was 15 and it was winter. I was getting ready for the night and already had my PJs on, when suddenly my mom said, Hey, wanna see a UFO? I, being an enthusiast of the unknown, happily obliged and went outside. When I got there, I remember seeing these lights just hovering over our backyard. I remember seeing two, but my mom and stepdad said that there were three and that they were in a perfect triangle. I remember they kept changing color and we were all sitting out there trying to figure out what they were. From what I can recall, they had been out there for days. Finally, in 2016, I was 16 years old, and I was driving with a friend of mine back from camp. We were near our home when we saw this bright light just hovering. At first I thought it was a helicopter, but he pointed out that it was too close to be that. As we got closer, we saw that it was triangular in shape. I told him to pull over and get a picture. We pulled over and I remember that it took him forever to eventually get the camera. By then, I was watching this thing and it was slowly moving away. When he finally got his camera together, it had already disappeared. This one could easily be explained as it could have been a military drone. We were close to some military base thing. But either way, it was still very interesting. I was about 11, and I was just laying in my bed. But the way my bed was positioned in my room made it so that I could look straight down the hallway, as in the bottom of my bed faced the door, and my head was near a wall. Anyway, I was laying there, and I was trying to go to sleep, when I heard a door open. So I looked down the hallway, and all I saw was a completely nude woman standing down at the end of the hallway staring at me. She was kind of a pretty woman. She had long, dark hair, and I could even see her pale blue eyes. She was probably in her late twenties or early thirties. She was moving closer and closer to me. I was already afraid because there was this strange naked woman in my house, but what was even weirder is that her legs weren't moving. They weren't even touching the ground. The weirdest part, though, is that the closer she got to me, the older she looked. By the time she was at my door, she was hunched over, had gray hair that looked like it had never been brushed, wrinkled skin, and all the other features of an old woman that you would expect. As soon as she entered my room, she started screaming at me, which scared me, so I pulled the blankets above my head. I closed my eyes, but when I pulled the blankets off, I didn't see anything. 
If anyone has ever experienced something like this, or you know what kind of entity this was, please let me know. So my boyfriend and I were staying at my grandma's house for about a week. We both like late night walking, so I decided to take him out on one and show him what it's like at my grandma's. He's used to the city, and my grandma's house is in the middle of nowhere. We ended up walking a direction that I never go, and we had walked for a few minutes before we hit a field clearing on either side of the road. We were talking, when all of a sudden we heard coyotes toward the back part of the fields and mountains. I told him they move fast and that we should probably turn back and get back to the house. We did, but it seemed like the moment we turned to walk back, they began to close in. Within a matter of seconds they seemed to be right behind us and were closing the distance fast. We began to panic and power walk and then jog because they sounded like they were in a frenzy. After a minute or two of fear and adrenaline, the sound died to a near silence. Almost home, a dog ran out in front of us wanting attention. However, as soon as I went to pet him, he seemed to notice something and immediately positioned himself behind us, toward the coyote area we had just left, and began barking and growling. We took it as our cue and booked it the rest of the way home, with his frantic barks in the background. When we made it back, my boyfriend wanted to sit on the steps to see if they had tracked us all the way back. We sat for a moment, before everything went silent. All of a sudden, a low, deep, growling noise filled the air. It was everywhere, all at once, like a jet taking off. It began to get louder as an ice-cold chill ran straight down my back. We both looked at each other for a second before I spoke up and told him something wasn't right and we needed to go in now. We darted in the house and locked the doors, done exploring for the night. The coyotes are normal for our area and we're on their normal trail. But what made them go silent and stop tracking us what was the dog so frantic about? And more importantly, what was that sound? Ever since I was a child, I've gotten random snippets of deja vu. These episodes last from a few seconds to a minute. Whenever I have them though, I always get the sense that what just happened was something I had dreamt about. I don't have particularly vivid dreams often, and I rarely remember the details when they are vivid. The real-life occurrences trigger the feelings of deja vu, but when I think about it logically, I know that it's not something I've experienced before, but rather something from a dream, or maybe an alternate reality or something that my mind just interprets as a dream. I'm not sure what to make of it, and I've never told anyone else about this. I guess I just want to know that I'm not alone. I started recording my sleep a month ago to hear myself sleep talk, but haven't really heard myself. However, yesterday morning I came across a very strange voice clearly saying, Wake up at 4.30. It's definitely not me, as I'm a female and the voice is very deep. My partner was in the spare room that night and you can hear no entrance into the room previous to the recording, which you can hear with other recordings on the app where we enter or leave the bedroom, no matter how quiet we are. I have no idea what this could be. Nothing was heard after this apart from me possibly moving around and then when I woke up a few hours later. Now I'm scared, especially as we've had some weird things happening in our house. Also, just some answers to some questions or assumptions I know I'll get. My partner pranking me. It couldn't be that. I started using the app as my partner told me that I sleep talk. 
I hadn't really heard much in the month that I was using it, so I stopped using it for a couple of weeks. Therefore, he had no idea I was recording on this night. My partner is a terrible prankster and always ends up laughing. Even he's a bit freaked out. Neat pranking. Definitely not. Like my partner, I'm not good at holding it out. And also, I would probably come up with something a little bit better. Another assumption is that it's my voice, but it's too low to be mine, and it sounds robotic. When I've heard myself sleep talk on this app in the past, it sounds nothing like it. According to Fitbit, at this time I wasn't dreaming, so I couldn't have been sleep talking. Although I accept that this isn't exactly the most highly accurate data. It's not a noise coming from outside either. It's too clear. Noises from farther away sound, well, farther away. And the phone is right next to me on the bedside table. We have no idea what said it.